So, my name's Dave. You can call me Draska Dave. I kind of went with that because that's the name of the brand of my creative work. So Draska is the island where the dragons live. And that's how the story started when I sat down late at night because my kids would not go to sleep. And it was raining that night and I decided to tell them a story. And midway through that story, I'd lost track of time. They had fallen asleep however long it had been. And I was still going. And I looked around. I saw that they were sleeping. I'm like, you know, this is a good story. I'm going to just keep going and see where it goes. And I finished that story, whatever, that first, call it a first draft, mental draft. And I forgot about it the next day. Years go by. And, you know, I, I had started my epic back in that that's separate from this back in like 2010 i was doing uh college and i was so sick of all the writing and the reading and the just the bs that comes with every class and i always overloaded my schedule so i always had a lot to do and one day, I got so frustrated, I'm just like, screw it, I'm not reading any more of this crap. I'm not writing another page for this school today. And I just started writing creatively, and I drew on some of the things I had thought about, you know, growing up, and if I had ever, if I ever decided to write stuff, you know, kind of that creative, I don't know, what, what you would say, like, just... Things I've imagined before, I was bringing them to life, and so I had the I had the start, this this picture, this image, that has brought me to where I am today, and that was back in like I said, 2010, just about, and 2010, 2011, yeah, and so I I, I was writing that epic for years, uh, and. I needed a break from it. I was, I think, like seven or eight full edits in. I think the work is now like five or six hundred pages. And I needed a break because every time I go through it, I would go through from the beginning to the end. And everything that I was learning from editors or uh, beta readers or, you know, whoever, you know, or, or things I would, I would wake up out of a dream and go write something down and have to implement it into the book, and which is kind of how it goes, like, with creative writing and stuff. Sometimes I get on the treadmill and I'm like, man, I, I need at least 30 minutes on this thing. And two minutes in, I have this idea and I have to get it out of my head and I jump off that treadmill and I write for the next two, three hours. So, but going back to Draska, why I'm doing this YouTube channel is I want to bring you along this journey that I've been on because most people, most people close to me have they, they see the product of my work, my labors, but only my wife really knows what I've gone through to get here. And let's talk about here for a second. Here is, I still haven't published a book, still haven't published a game, still haven't finished, finished anything in this, call it a lifelong journey, but really actively writing and creating has been about 10 years and there's a lot of ups and downs through that especially being a creative I know many people can relate with that and when I was at a real low point with my epic and I, it's just you know I want it to be so good and, and I'm still working on it I want it to be so good that when I bring it to market it's not it doesn't feel like it's the eighth draft. It feels like it's the final draft, you know? So that's where I'm at. And even though it's taken, call it 10 years to get to this point, if it takes another 10 years, I don't think it will. To finish that epic, I will. But what's cool is everything I've learned up until this point, so get back to Draska. So I've, I'm bouncing around a little bit, but get back to Draska. I needed a break and I sat down and I think it was on a Saturday because all my kids were home. And I was looking at them, I was looking around, they were all watching TV, and I was tired from, uh, from work that week or whatever. 
but I but I wanted to interact with them. I wanted to play games with them. I don't I don't want to play video games with them. I didn't want to watch more TV with them. It uh, something was it was either raining that day or it was too hot, and I didn't want to go outside. I just wanted to relax. But I wanted to do something, and, and board games is something I grew up with. Board games, uh, man, we, we played so many board games growing up. Mainly Risk. Risk was my favorite. And my kids are too young for Risk. So my kids, my, I think my oldest was seven. And even Monopoly, all the like the normal games you'd have in your, your cupboard or whatever, the, the kids would, weren't into it. So I kind of went on a binge, and I bought a bunch of kids' versions of those games. And, you know, the, the kids liked them several weeks later when, when, uh, when we got them in. But I found myself getting very bored. <laughs> like, extremely bored. Like, one, two times, and I'm, I don't want to play this game anymore. And so while my kids were playing, it was maybe two or three games in. I go and I sit down at the table, I get a bunch of paper. I just had like this creative buzz, you know, like when you're just standing, talking to friends, and all of a sudden a bee flies by your ear and you're just like, whoa, and you, and you, and you get out of the way. That's kind of how it is for for me with like creative ideas when they come. It's like, oh, I got to go do something with this. I got to move. And I sat down and I started writing and designing this game that would be friendly for both adults and kids, something that adults wouldn't get bored playing. And I drew on the story I told that one night, that rainy night, uh, when my kids fell asleep. And I, and I pulled from that story as I was developing this game. And, you know, I pulled from all the different games I loved growing up, whether it was Risk or Monopoly or, you know, stuff like that. Catan is, is a good one. That's a more recent one, more recent favorite though. But that was the first draft of Draska the game. And several months later, I had a prototype I put together and I took a big group of uh, my friends up to Big Bear and we stayed two days and we just played that game. And they had a blast, I had a blast. I learned a lot and I made some changes to the game. And I realized it wasn't as kid friendly as I thought it would be. And so my kids and I played it a couple times, but they, like I said, it wasn't as kid friendly. They liked the idea. They liked the, the way it played, but it's kind of like, you know, sitting down to play risk. I mean, it could take two hours or more to play that game. And, and that's what Jurassic kind of opened the door for. It could take two hours to play. So, since then, you know, it's just changed quite dramatically. But the uh, the structure, the, the core of it has stayed roughly the same. But from that, it spawned other games. So, Draska Race to the Isle, the kid version, is kind of a, it's like a risk. Like if you really loved risk um, and role-playing games, and you married it with Candyland. <laughs> I think that's the best way to describe it. And so we did that, and in the process of, of that, you know, kind of developing that, how it would play and all that, I started uh, utilizing an app called Fiverr, and I started meeting a bunch of people, designers and, and artists and, I mean, even musicians, and I started developing relationships with different people, and I found this artist who, uh, you know, I give him small little jobs, and... You know, he, he'd always knock him out of the park and it'd be, it'd be awesome, it'd be fun. And I, ha I had a, let's call it really expensive artist um, who's awesome, um, but expensive in the sense of like hundreds of dollars for one artwork. And it's, it's pretty, pretty intense artwork, I'll, I'll show you up here. So he did an awesome job. So that was my idea i wanted to do something for draska the original game i wanted to do something like hardcore fantasy feel with like a cool looking map and from that we got to draska race to the owl which is more of like a cartoony fun for kids fun for the whole family kind of a thing and yeah where are we at 
now? That was the question. Where, where is here? So here is, I've launched a Kickstarter. It didn't do what, you know, I kind of hoped it would, but realistically, I understood that, you know, there's a, there's a lot that goes into launching these Kickstarters and I did a lot, but still felt kind of like the bare minimum. Uh, cause I needed to finish something. Like I said, it's been 10 years. I needed to finish something and Draska race to the aisle was a simplified version of the main Draska game that was fun to play. My kids loved the artwork was easier and it was quicker to put that together. Uh, so we, you know, me and my wife decided let's go for it. And we did it and it wasn't financially successful, but from a standpoint of finishing something, it was hugely successful. And, and I came out of that ready for the next thing. And, you know, I didn't meet the financial goals I needed to, to actually produce the game and, and send it out. Uh, but that's still in the plan. Uh, and what's cool is with this whole creative process, if you allow yourself just kind of room to fail, I guess, maybe that's the wrong word, but when I don't put so much on one project that, you know, I feel like, okay, now I'm at the top of the mountain. Like now I need to go to the next top of the mountain, the next peak. It's kind of like sometimes on my creative journey, it's like I get to the peak and I look around, I'm like, Oh, that's a cool mountain over there. I'm going to, I'm going to climb down this one and go up that one. That's about the same height. Uh, so, so I, I do that. And in that, that's how, I came back to the story of Draska and the story and the lore behind it. And, you know, I, I did something that I thought was really cool growing up. I love stories that put the kids into the fantasy world or whatever it might be. Never Ending Story was a, one of my favorites as a kid. And so that's what I did. I took my kids and I, I threw them in the story. And it's kind of like you, you, you see... Draska, you see the 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 mainland of Espar. You see the creatures. You see everything through their eyes, and it was a lot of fun to write that first book. And I'm working on the second one now. The third, the third one's kind of creatively in in the process. My hope is that I can write one of these every year over the next seven to ten years, and finish the time period of when the Dark Wars start to when you would play the games, which is the Knights of Promise returning to the mainland, returning to uh, reunite with the dragons and defeat the evil that is plaguing the land, and which is how the game plays Draska. So you're playing out that history, if you will. And... What started out as seven nights, uh, it evolved because I started to think about it. I'm like, you know, there's so much here. There's so much story. There's so much history. And every time I, I would write something new, it was like there would be a branch that would, that would come out of that branch. And new characters and new personalities. And, and it, it, it evolved into 21 nights of Espar, nights of promise. So you get... You know, three knights for each of the colors of uh, armor and uh, the different families. And it's pretty cool. I had a lot of fun writing it. We're almost there. So that, that's kind of what I'm going to be talking about. I'm going to be going into more about my story and how I come up with ideas and what I use, who I who I work with, you know, how I, how I found those people. Some people are just kind of, kind of come to you in your life and you're... You're just like, hey, this is meant to be. This is awesome. And so, yeah. So this is the first video of many to come. And before I finish out this video, what I would say is if you have any questions for me or you're an aspiring writer, artist, whatever it might be, and, you know, you're going through like a low, a low point right now, because we all go through those lows. I've had some epic lows. Just reach out. In the comment section just say hey you know whatever you want to say and if i can get to it in the next video i will and i'll uh i'll uh whatever it's called uh, 
reference you if you want me to or uh, or just answer the question so yeah I'm excited to see what this becomes so and I'm excited to finish all these creative works and move on to the next ones so that's enough for today and uh, catch you later <laughs>